Hi folks, this is Eric Dober from the Colorado School of Mines. We're going to do an example problem today looking at the vocabulary associated with crystallography and seeing how that plays out in a simple system. So to begin, let's start by setting up a simple crystal. We've got a 2D array of water molecules where the oxygen is shown in red and the hydrogen is shown in gray. So the first thing to remember is that a unit cell is any object that can successfully tessellate space through linear translations. Here we see two examples where we have a rectangle and a hexagon that can translate through space. What we see when we do this translation is that the atoms within each unit cell are identical. So we have this invariance of local environment. We can also pick other unit cells like the diamond structure here or this bigger hexagon up here. We can see that these also translate through space. So when we're talking about these translations, what that suggests is there's an underlying set of lattice vectors that are required to do this translation of the unit cell or this tessellation across space. In this class, we'll always denote the lattice vectors as T if we're working in real space, and we'll use G when we're working in reciprocal space. In this video, we're considering four different unit cells, and we can see that the four different unit cells each have their own unique lattice vectors. If the lattice vectors can be used to construct the unit cell edges, then the unit cell you're considering is part of a crystal system. First of all, when we're talking about a crystal system, we're not talking about the basis inside or any centering operations. We're just talking about what the shape of the cell looks like. In 3D, there's seven crystal systems, cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinic. And in 2D, there are only four crystal systems, the oblique, hexagonal, rectangular, and square systems. You may be wondering what unit cells aren't crystal systems. And so the hexagonal cells that we showed earlier are not crystal systems, nor is this weird cell that I show here on the right, it does translate through space, but it's definitely not built out of its lattice vectors. So part and parcel with lattice vectors are lattice points. These are local origins that in concert with this basis that we'll talk about in a second, act as generators for atoms within the crystal. At a minimum, every crystal has lattice points at every combination of the lattice vectors. But we'll see in a second, there may be additional lattice points as well. So if the crystal system has only one lattice point, then it's a primitive system. To assess the number of lattice points, you have to look at the basis. This business is a bit complicated. There's a lot of nested and hierarchical statements, and causality is not always obvious. Okay, I think at this point we've got to talk about the basis. So the basis is a set of vectors which is to describe the atom positions with respect to a lattice point. Let's take the rectangle case we've had floating throughout this video. We could use these blue arrows on the right to denote the basis. But we could simplify the situation through the inclusion of a lattice point at the center of the rectangle. You can see that here with this orange vector. Now our basis has gotten significantly simplified. It's a three atom basis with an oxygen atom at the lattice point and two additional hydrogens above and below the lattice points as denoted by these blue arrows. So we've simplified the basis by putting a lattice point within the cell. What that tells us though, is that the cell that we're working with, if it has two lattice points within it, isn't the primitive cell. If we want the primitive cell, we have to go back to the diamond lattice that we showed earlier. Again, here we can figure out what the basis must be. We've got a lattice point at each of these red oxygen atoms, and we've got two vectors for the hydrogen atoms, one going to the left, one going to the right. And so again, for any given lattice point, we only have three atoms. This cell is really appealing in that it's simple, it doesn't have any centering operations, it's really clean like that. But by convention, what we really like are cells that highlight the symmetry of the system. And the basic argument comes down to the rectangular cell highlights the mirror planes in the system better than the diamond lattice does. So as a product of that, by convention, we use the centered rectangular cell rather than the primitive diamond cell to talk about this lattice, even though structurally they're equivalent. That's why you see all these different centered cells out there, is that it highlights the symmetry of the crystal. A critical term that we're going to use throughout this class is Brave lattice. The Brave lattice specifies both the crystal system and the centering present. So for example, in this system, we would describe this as a centered rectangular Brave lattice. This indicates the character of the lattice vectors, specifically that they're orthogonal to each other, and additionally informs you that there's a lattice point at the center of the cell. 
we can see that the local environment around each lattice point is identical, regardless of whether or not it's at the edge of the cell or whether or not it's in the center of the cell. I think broadly speaking, it's probably worth mentioning that it's a lot easier to build a crystal than to describe an existing crystal. So for example, if somebody tells you how you have a crystal system that looks like, yay, you got a rectangle, and they say, ah, but it's a center crystal. Now I know my Brave lattice has lattice points denoted by these blue circles. Then somebody says, ah, and the basis is oxygen here, hydrogen here, and another hydrogen here. Boom. So given the Brave lattice and the basis, I can essentially pin the tail on the donkey and apply the basis to each lattice point in the Brave lattice, ending up with the crystal that we see on the right. That's all for today, folks. Have a good one.